I'm Matt Baker, I'm the orchestrator of the Stove Network. I was one of the founders, so we've been going for 10 years now. I think the stove's involvement with the fountain probably starts in 2014, where we did a project called Charter 14, where we crowdsourced a new charter for the town. We launched that at the Good Neighbours Festival that year, um, and we launched it at the fountain. So that was a really lovely experience of the fountain as a part of the life of the town. We really enjoyed watching the way that people related to it and then it was really sad then watching it gradually go downhill and it got turned off. I believe it was turned off because people were concerned about a disease from the water and gradually the paintwork started to get worse and worse. And then one day, the next bit of the story really was that Kirsten Scott, who's still involved in the project very much, turned up in my office one day and said, Matt, I, I, I want to do something about the fountain. I'm Kirsten Scott and I am creative engagement lead on the fountain project. I started about five years ago now to try and campaign to get the fountain restored. It kind of just came about because I was a bit fed up of seeing it in such a bad state, you know, it just kind of let the town down a bit and I felt that like I could probably do something. I spoke to Matt and he was like, yeah, this is a really great idea. And he kind of helped me navigate the council and put me in touch with the right people. And a great friendship was formed from that, really. And she went off and started doing some research into the fountain and got quickly obsessed with the story of the fountain. And we put it up on our blog and it was a very popular post. We got great response and, and it seemed like there were a lot of people that were very interested in the fountain and there was this sort of what are we going to do about the fountain kind of chat started to develop. The idea came about of like no it's not just a quick job to tart it up and this is a piece of civil engineering that has stopped working and there's a job to be done to bring it back to its former glory. The time is really important you know, when you look at the story of the fountain, it was put up to celebrate the bringing of clean water to the centre of town at the end of a cholera outbreak. And the timing with the COVID situation just seems, seems like an incredibly symbolic moment. That fountain was there to celebrate us coming out of a big disaster for our community and it could do the same again. So I think there's a, there's a real momentum of hope around that idea which I think is really lovely the way it connects back to the history. My name is Katie, um, I'm part of the Stove team here um, and my role with the Stove is really as the public art lead. Kirsten had been developing lots of different ideas of things that she really wanted to try out or ways that she wanted to maybe reach a wider variety of people than we would have got if we just had like a straightforward consultation day. So we've been kicking off quite a few different workshops and activities. The workshops themselves, we've had a few so far over the summer holidays, so everybody then gets an opportunity to kind of be involved and understand why is the fountain there, because if you don't know, it's just a kind of ornament on the high street, but there is a huge sort of significance to it. Like a really successful, oh my goodness, really successful chocolate casting workshop, because thinking about chocolate and mould making is just obviously the most exciting thing that ever happened. The chocolate casting was amazing. That was just so much fun. The kids just got so into it. The Moni Ive chocolatiers came to the usual place and we were able again to give them this kind of potted history of the fountain and its origins and basically teach them using chocolate as a much safer and tastier medium than cast iron, how the moulds are made and how these fountains were, were made in the 1800s. Feedback from that was really nice, that people understood a bit more about the fountain and why it's having to be done this way and you can't just slap some paint on it, there, there is a process that needs to be done. We've also had some really lovely workshops with the Summerhill Youth Group, who one of our artists, Kirsty Turpey, came and worked with. I'm Kirsty Turpey, I'm a community artist and graphic designer. 
For the Dumfries Fountain project, I was invited by the organisers to run two workshops with Summerhill Community Centre Youth Group. The main sort of aim was to create our own miniature fountain. We paper mashed around a drinks fountain and then the young people created little sculptures out of salt dough. I think it's really exciting that the um, fountain is going to get restored. It's been really wonderful to hear about the history of it and I think it's really important that everybody in the town sort of connects with that history. It's really nice that the project is going around and connecting with the community and yeah, really excited to see what it's going to look like when it's finished. We've had some activities and events down on the Mill Green and into the town as part of the Nethraid. So we had a sketch and walk and a creative writing picnic. We did a creative writing picnic at Nethraid. Lizzie and Emily from We Agree on Eggs did those. They did a little bit of meditation and mindfulness and sort of talking about watery words and sounds and did some creative writing off the back of that, which was fantastic. Really enjoyed seeing what's come out of that. We've also had the archaeology talk and the creative writing workshops. I'm Andrew Nicholson. I'm the council's archaeologist. The talk I gave today was based on the development of the town of Dumfries from the late 12th century. Originally, the Nith in Dumfries was the border of Scotland when Galloway was an independent state. Still today, you can still trace the patterns of the medieval town in the current streets and in some of the architectural features that, that are still standing. My name is Jim Mitchell. I'm a conservation engineer. Basically, my job is to specify and run projects where there's an engineering element involved in historic structures and buildings. Over the years we've done quite a few restoration jobs on, on historic fountains. Today we were asked to come down here and talk to invited guests about what we plan to do with the fountain. Put people's minds at ease about what we're going to do and it's nothing drastic or terrible that's going to happen to their fountain. Restoring these kinds of fountains can be quite challenging. Fortunately, this one is less challenging in that it's not a very large fountain. It's a straightforward structure which I'm already familiar with because I've done others very similar to it in the past. I think the, the fountain restoration is an excellent project. To an extent, it's industrial archaeology and there's the potential for archaeological remains or medieval finds to be made and that's going to require a certain amount of archaeological monitoring. They can look pretty bad when they're allowed to go into a state like the way this one is just now, but the restoration will transform it. It will become quite a feature in the town centre, I hope, for many years. And this time it will be done properly. I'm Joanne Mackay and I'm a poet, writer and historical researcher who also has the huge privilege of working for six months a year at Dumfries Museum. I was invited by the Stove Network in response to a commission opportunity to look at previous incidents of pandemic disease in Dumfries and Galloway. Because the whole thrust of the project was pandemics, I was really focused on architecture, sacred spaces, and what physical remains there are of pandemic disease within the region. It was lovely to be invited, obviously, by the Fountain Project to actually do writing workshops for them because so much of what I believe about the town is making the geography real for people. Fountain restoration. Restoration sent to teach you present patient is a central feature. Great it has begun. The boom secured in 1851 when the room was pure. And it's great for to shine, save the plight. January 1849, papers write. 
the fountain is so crucial now because it's an important point in the town's history of marking something that was really quite spectacular and it's something to celebrate. So we should have a working fountain in the centre of our town to memorialise all those that wanted to make a better town after some of the utter horrors, you know, which are here in this exhibition. What we were trying to really think about is like, how can we invite people who might not necessarily think that they should have an opinion about the fountain and actually say, actually you should. You know, it's part of our town identity and so therefore we'd like to be sharing that with you and not just us holding that in our own little sphere. And I guess things like the Summer Hill one was really lovely because some of the young people at the beginning were like, look, what's this got to do with us? Um, or why are we doing this? Why should we be interested in actually just being able to like use a creative project like that, something really easy, but actually then whilst we're doing that, we can have a chat about the things that are really interesting and go, well, actually, why, why should you be interested? Or why, why should we be having this conversation with you guys and not just with grown-ups or whatever? So it's been really nice actually to open that out to a broader kind of collection of people. My name is Jenna McCrory. I am a producer and sound artist. We're here at Loch Foot today in Dumfries and Galloway, just about five miles out of the town. And we're just gathering some field recordings from the local area. What I tend to do in my practice is I go to a location and record sounds from nature in that location. So we're doing this today as part of the Dumfries Fountain Project and we're going to take these sounds and I'm going to make them into music and arrange them into a bit of a soundtrack. We've been using the Zoom HN4 field recorder today with a little hydrophone, which is exactly as the name sounds. It is a microphone that goes underwater, so we've just got one of those. So we've been unlocking this whole new field recording area today. We're so used to coming to a location like this and just experiencing the sounds that we're used to experiencing. So today we've been taking it a step further and trying to hear what goes on under the water. I just capture as many sounds as I can and see what sounds I'm drawn to in a place. I collate them all and I get them onto my computer and from there I really, really cut all of the audio up. It's quite a funny process because you can really absolutely like destroy a sound and make it into something completely new. There isn't a certain way I go about things, I just get all the sounds laid out, have a listen to them and see what I'm drawn to or what kind of mood I'm in that day and see what happens. Obviously I would love to see a beautiful fountain that works in the middle of town that's going to give me unbelievable joy and I'm just going to keep visioning it until it happens. If you look at the way our high street is changing, through the last 30-40 years high streets have been all about retail and shopping and that's what they've come to mean for people. And in the last 10 years, you've started to see the death of the high street, the sort of drop off of national chain stores. And Dumfries has been very much at the forefront of that. But what happens after that? There's almost this imagining that, oh, well, if you haven't got the shops, you haven't got a high street. But of course you're gonna have a high street. There's always going to be a need for a place for people to gather. Our high street has to be that again for us, which means that the high street is going to have to be a place that you come to for experiences, to be part of something, and to, to something that reflects your place and reflects your community. So it reflects the heritage, it reflects the culture. So the fountain, for me, is a symbol of that. It's a symbol of that renaissance of Dumfries into its next future being. The stove is really involved in this wider town centre regeneration conversation and we really think that that's, that's really not just about buildings. If we're going to imagine the town to truly be a different place or to be better, then we have to start small and some of these projects, you know, that actually feels like a worthwhile thing. Can we change around that one thing in our town just by somebody standing up and going, I think that should be better and everybody else saying, yeah, it probably should be better. That's effectively what this project is going through. It's a long-winded conversation about everyone going, yeah, we probably should do something with that. The fountain's constant 
it's never gone. It's, it's stayed there for the whole time it's been there and everything around it changes. And sometimes people put up with things for so long, you know, things that aren't working or things that are in disrepair that it just becomes normal and you forget or you maybe even don't remember what it was like when something was in its best state. I think in the long run, it'll be a really good thing because eventually people are going to be sitting around that fountain and the noise of the water will be hitting you from every direction. You know what I mean? It'll be a really lovely thing. It'll be a, a beautiful thing for people to do. We got involved because we've done one very similar to this in the Fountain Gardens in Paisley, which is the bigger version of this. This is by the Sun Foundry at Glasgow, George Smith & Co. So you get a feel for how the, the foundry put them together. So we came up with an evaluation how the pumping was under the ground. The sequencing then is done on how to break the big parts down, which parts you need to take off and how to minimise the number of lifts you have to do but while protecting the cast iron. Well, the general techniques for repairs, they're pretty standard, to be honest. There's only so many ways you can repair broken cast iron. I find, with each one of these jobs, that the challenges tend to come from the colour schemes that come through. And because of the Victorian paints are no longer produced because of what they were made of. So it comes from reports from the time of how these things, the effect of these things came across. Uh, a lot of it was the changing of the light and the water reflected from the different colours or techniques that were used within it, whether it be powders, inks, dyes. So it's trying to figure out what they used, how they did it, and what modern materials we can use to replicate it. It's so fascinating and it's, it's, they've been so welcoming and you can feel the enthusiasm that they have for what they're doing and their craft and that just really comes through and it's so nice to be able to, to share that with the kids so that they get that understanding as well. And, yeah, I'm, I feel like a big kid to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm really enjoying today, in, enormously. We're always telling children about they have a voice and that if they want to see something done, they can do something about it. And it's just, it's really bringing their learning alive, which for me is Curriculum for Excellence. It's something that they can hopefully look back on in years to come and see that they had a hand in, in doing and share it with family and friends and maybe even their children, grandchildren in years to come. Once you've pressed the gold onto the surface, you, you can brush off the ex excess with a squirrel haired brush. And that gives you a nice finish. There's a lot of grooves here. You can see where the original thing's been carved. It's lovely, but it's difficult to get the gold mm. into, especially like around here. So I'm using transfer leaf here. You can also use loose leaf gold and lift it up and place it in so I can tamp it down with this little stubby brush. It's nice to see the transformation and because it's, um, you know, a really, it's like a high quality restoration rather than just painting everything gold, you've got the real gold and it's, it's a high carrot so it, it won't tarnish um, and it's, it's really long lasting. It's for outside and all weathers, the gold should be fine for a long, long time. When you're working on the projects, it's always, it's part parcel of the job. You, you've got responsibility because you want to do it right and you want it to be the best it can be. And particularly when you're trying out these new techniques, you, you do feel a sort of a worry, does it going to look right? And But I quite often, you know, my family will come up with when we go to the opening and you're watching the members of the public and you're seeing the reaction, you're seeing the kids be jumping in the fountain or playing and you see the joy it brings. It's, that is the same with any of the projects. It's seeing the local people appreciating and seeing something they really like and being proud of it again. That's, that's what it's, it means a lot to us all.
a working fountain on the high street as beautiful as the Victorians originally conceived it is wonderful for the town in so many ways. A, we get a vision of what people in the past believed this town could be, but B, we also bring something to the high street of, of great beauty, of historical interest, that is hopefully going to be that catalyst to say, look how beautiful this town was, is and can be. And you could not ask for more than that. It's a fantastic project, beautifully done. I think the fountain's a really great catalyst, really, for what can happen in the town going forward. It sort of sets a benchmark and says this is what we can do to make Dumfries really live again and you know we're surrounded by some great architecture great heritage and so you know I think this gives us a little window into what can be if we continue on this process and also if we get public money ploughed into it which is really necessary regenerating the town means you know investing in it and then the rest will follow because it takes uh, it takes somebody to start it and I think what started with the Fountain Project is the beginning of great things to come. The high street has changed, you don't go shopping necessarily in a, in a real life shop anymore. So the high street needs to kind of have a different meaning and a different purpose and I think having sort of really nice community spaces where we can all gather and going forward our high street needs to adapt to this new way that we use it and, and I think having the fountain being front and centre and beautiful and water coming out of it and just being able to sort of hang out and chill and meet your friends and your family and it's just going to be so nice, What's, what, what could be better?